Hello and welcome along to this Guys Late Playoff special on the Route 1 show. I'm Stephen Brown and with me is Tim Feather. Hi, Tim. Hello. Now, Guys Late beat North Ferriby 2 0 in the first leg of the playoff semi final. A fantastic result. And we've got so much coming up on the show for Guys Late fans. But first, Tim, Route 1 boys, me, yourself, and Chris Bell. Well, we went along, didn't we? We certainly did, yeah. I had a rare Wednesday night off and I thought, right. We've got to get ourselves along to this. Have you ever been to the Nevermore before? I've not, actually, no. That was my first time at Nevermore. Um, what did you think? What were your first impressions? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. There's definitely something there to build upon. And all the mm. things that Chris were telling us, that guys are trying to do in the future, I mean, it, it's definitely a plan that a lot of non-league clubs should be trying to they're really Compete going somewhere, aren't they? they? Are. You really get the impression with guys as a direction. When I first arrived, I brought along a mate of mine, and we weren't, we didn't think we'd be stepping into anything like that. There's no. training pictures. I mean, it was a packed out crowd as well. I mean, I think it was one thousand one hundred. Yeah, yeah. I mean, inc- over a thousand people packed in, and it was a really, it was a good little atmosphere as well. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Was, it. It was absolutely, and there's a new pitch to be laid as well. Chris was telling us there is. about seventy nine. Joking that John DC would have wanted. Maybe he just <laughs> John DC was there last night with <laughs> it Jordan. Was, wasn't it? Maybe he was just looking at the pitch, going, "Can we have Why? that?" <laughs> Crying. Yeah, that, that was interesting because apparently Chris Bell, our Bradford Park having your correspondent, he kind of passed to John DC on the way. It was like John the pitch is fantastic and they're relaying it it's I saw incredible. Jordan DC putting sugar in his tea and I was thinking how many sugars but I thought it's end of season now <laughs> he can have as many sugars in his tea as he yeah, wants Hartlepool reserves you know Hartlepool you never know keeping an yeah. eye, keeping an eye. Um, it was like we say a fantastic uh, atmosphere there we also got to see our guys a correspondent in person as well Colin Robertson yeah did he live up to your expectations, Ah, Colin? He looked very stressed at the beginning of the game. It was. <laughs> it doesn't know which way to be going. A lot yeah. of nerves. There were a lot of nerves around the Mall last night. Yeah, there were. Um, yeah, and there I started to feel it a little bit, especially in the second half. I was like, because yeah. Ferriby really started to come on a little bit more. Yeah. But it was uh, a good result. And Ferriby, I mean, I was talking to uh, Lewis and I said, about how Ferriby played a really high line and then Adam Boyce got behind him once and they kept the high line and then he scored and they kept the high line all the way through the second half as well so I'm not surprised a team like Geisley can just destroy if you play a high line against Geisley they're going to destroy you with that pace absolutely absolutely a bit of controversy at half time as well because I didn't give Chris one of my hot dogs no, you didn't. You got was, two hot dogs. Two hot dogs. Can I just explain why I ended up getting two hot dogs? My mate who was, I was with, he said, I think I'm going to get two hot dogs. I was like, that's ridiculous. Who gets two hot dogs? And then the more I thought about it, I thought, I can have two hot dogs as well. So my mate are walking back with four, you know, four hot dogs between us and just sat there eating it. And there was, sorry, Chris, they'd run out of pies. What can I say? Oh dear! Never mind. Next time, next time, I just. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think the catering time. services in Nethermore quite thought they were going to get eleven hundred people. No, the door, <laughs> no, so. absolutely. And it, the food's fantastic as well. So it, it is. was going to fly is. off, wasn't it? It was going to fly off. Now coming up on this guy's special, we're going to hear from boss Matt Bauer, CEO and club secretary Aidy Towers, our guys' correspondent Colin Robertson, and players Wayne Brooksby, Ollie Johnson, Danny Ellis, plus others. And we're also going to hear from guys' fan and committee member of the guys' support. Club Adam Bridson. Okay, well, let's get right to it and let's uh, have a little listen of the highlights from last night's game, Tim. This is Colin Robertson and Tom Feeney commentating on Geisley versus North Ferriby. Boschel sends it forward, flick on from Ollie Johnson, Boy's in a race, he's beaten the fullback, goes through on goal this time and plays the finish! Adam Boys has scored the goal that gives Guys in the lead. He beat Mark but Gray for pace after a great flick on from Ollie Johnson. And after 36 minutes, it's Geisley who make the breakthrough. And it's Geisley 1, North Ferriby United 0. Well, Adam Boys may have missed that, that first chance about 15 minutes ago, but there was no mistake this time. Does so well. You know, Ollie Johnson there does so well. Gets his head onto the ball, flicks it. And Adam Boys is in the perfect position, running into goal. Has his shot, beats the keeper. 1-0, Geisley, come on. 
super finish and it is now Geisley 2, North Ferriby United 0. What an assist from Stephen Dickinson there because he's put under so much pressure. He just He's just aiming it forward but Ollie Johnson takes the ball, two really neat touches, gets into the area, beats the keeper, Geisley are 2-0 up and North Ferriby United, they really look shell-shocked because they were putting Geisley under pressure and all of a sudden Geisley on the counter-attack get the goal, Ollie Johnson so good to see him get that goal because it just looks like he needs that bit of confidence and he, you know, he's played at such a higher level and he has used them skills tonight, that's a fantastic goal, 2-0 Geisley headed back off the uh, edge of the six yard box by uh, Danny Ellis and then the final whistle goes and a rapturous cheer goes around Nethermore, the Lions have the first leg advantage here in this Skrill North playoff semi-final first leg. A goal in each half. The first from Adam Boys, a cool finish after being sent clear from the back four. The second, a well-crafted goal from Ollie Johnson and a super finish to make it 2-0. And we've held out against a formidable Ferriby side who are full of strength and full of power. And on Saturday, we'll have to go again. It's finished here, though. Geisley 2, Ferriby 0. Yeah, fantastic result there. That was the highlights on Geisley Radio, where you can follow all of Geisley's game, home and away commentators there with Colin Robertson and Tom Feeney. Um, incredibly, assists from Stephen Dickinson there, the, the goalkeeper who'd only made five or six appearances this season. What a, uh, I mean, that is tremendous. I mean, when, you know, the whispers amongst the crowd before the game started was, oh no, the, the keepers, you know, they played a mm. you know, few, handful of games but he turned out to uh, to work out really well and North Ferry couldn't compete could they with the long the long ball in a sense it, it did I remember I remember said um, I said to Chris I went that's a big kick and then <laughs> after and then he took a couple more and Chris went that really is a massive <laughs> kick that he's got. It was just phenomenal. And like yeah. we just said about Ferriby playing the high line, mm. when you've got a keeper who can kick... I think it was Mourinho earlier this week, <laughs> actually, who said, uh, when you've got a keeper who can kick like Czech and a yeah. player like Drogba who can bring it down, why play it short? Yeah, and that's absolutely. what Geisley did. They, they had that pace up front um, with boys up there. And what, what's the point in pl- trying to pass it through, especially Ferriby, because I don't know if you noticed, they really packed out that midfield and they tried to force Geisley into the middle of the pitch because they knew that's where they were going to win most of their tackles. Um, and then, but Geisley tried to stick it on the wings or over the top of them yeah. and the over the top just Worked absolutely time, devastated them. Yeah, but I thought Boschel was really impressive in middle. Yeah. The, his composure, just I thought it was uh, was fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, massive central midfielders for Ferriby, and Boschel yeah. was trying to fight them off. <laughs> <laughs> Get away! I think we were saying their number six was quite a big lad, weren't we? He was flying as well, wasn't he? <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa, flipping it. I'll there tell you, you what, go. if you've got points for commitment, he would have gone. <laughs> I think, well, that was the main point, wasn't it? Dealing with their physicality, and yeah. once they got through that, it was uh, it was plain sailing, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually tapped my pen then, you thought there was someone knocking <laughs> on the <laughs> door. I was like, <laughs> um, so, Colin Robertson, he caught up with boss Matt Bauer after the game who was naturally delighted but also cautious for the second leg too we'd have taken any kind of any kind of victory from the game and um and yeah, we, we, we've gone about our job really well tonight and, and put in a really good performance, professional performance. You know, we didn't set the world on fire or anything like that, but um, disciplined, defended well, um, and took, took our chances when they came. And, and you, you just showed a bit of quality in that final third. But it's always difficult against Ferriby. You're not going to be able to dictate a game like you know we may be doing in a lot of other games against them because they put so much pressure on the ball. They defend high up the pitch, but what that does leave is a bit of space in behind, and we, we managed to get in, in behind them on a few occasions. And and obviously that led to two of the goals. How important is it, that clean sheet uh, this evening? Obviously they were putting a lot of pressure on and had they got a goal back in the game it would have given them a, a real foothold for that second leg. It's a terrific clean sheet, you know, with um, the pressure that they were putting on, you know, plenty of balls coming into the box, but I don't think they really created anything clear-cut tonight and that's credit to our to our back four and, and the, the team in general, really. And, and the, the one real time that Dico was called upon in the first half, he, he pulls off a really good save for us. So, um, pleasing result, pleasing performance, but, you know, the, the cliches will come out now it's only half a job done and, and it's only half time in the tie so we've um, we just got to make sure we prepare ourselves right now we've got a few bumps and bruises in there again and, and you know one or two lads with illnesses that they've been carrying for a week or so so really pleased with the effort tonight and, and just hope we can go again on Saturday now. Yeah the older injury, injury hoodoo that you seem to suffer early doors 
uh, in your managerial career here seems to have returned a little bit. You know, Stephen Drench missing tonight, and Danny Ellis looks to be struggling uh, for a, a spell in the second half there after a knock on the ankle. I think he only took sort of four separate knocks really tonight, Dan. So I think hopefully it's more bumps and bruises and, and the sort of thing that um, you know that Dan will be able to get over because you know you've, he's got to do something bad to get him off the pitch. But we'll um, you know a couple of days now between. The second leg, hopefully, he can look after himself, get himself iced up, and, and I'm sure he'll be ready to go again. Because especially the way they play, you know, putting balls in the box, Dan's an important player for us. So hopefully, we'll get him right and, and be ready to go again Saturday. And how do you set out for Saturday? You know, it's a two-goal lead, so obviously we've got that advantage going into the game. Um, do, you, do, you, do we attempt to just close down the game, or do we go again to, to just win it? We, we go go to win the game. You know, we, we're two 0 up, and it's half time basically. So you know, we wouldn't shut up shop at half time in a in a 45 minute game if we were two 0 up. So we certainly won't be doing that at Ferry Bay. We see him by um, playing the two two up top that we can cause them trouble in behind even when we've not had much much of the ball or, or much sustained play we can we can cause trouble with, with the two that played up top tonight so um, you know I'm not saying that that's definitely what we'll do but it's um, yeah we, we won't be going to defend we'll be going to take the game to them because you know if we can if we get an early goal there you know it, it really you know puts puts a tie in our favour if, if they were to score early on then you know that, that, that will certainly change the tie so we've got to go and be positive there we have it, Matt Bauer speaking to Colin Robertson on Wednesday night after the team beat North Ferry bit 2-0. Matt Bauer's impressed me pretty much all the way through the season. He doesn't talk like your standard manager. He doesn't speak in cliches or anything. He's just a really positive, calm persona, isn't he, really, Tim? Yeah, you don't hear any of the, uh, at the end of the day when all's said <laughs> and done. Pull your socks up uh, over the moon. You've got to score a win, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but no, no, no. He's, he's considering where guys are. Well, it was a gutsy decision. We all sat here and we said that's a difficult decision and they made it and it's worked and it's fantastic. Absolutely. Well, joining us on the line now, I'm delighted to say, is CEO and Club Secretary. It's Eddie Towers. Hi, Eddie. Good evening, you right? I'm good, thank you. Thanks uh, for joining us. So, first of all, let's get your reaction after the result last night? Well, I mean, I think pretty much, you know, without being too cliche, it? uh, it, it, it's half-time in a game that we're tuning up in, really. But uh, mm. I must say, I thought last night we were excellent. The, I mean, Mark was very careful with his game plan for the lads. Um, we obviously still came one or two injuries, but the lads that are out there, I mean, particularly Steve Dickinson, who had to fill in at, at the last minute for, for Drench, he was ill. Uh, I think if, you know, from front to back, great performances. Uh, nice turnout, you know, in terms of numbers. And then lots of new faces last night as well. So uh, yeah, it was it was a good evening for the club. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, one thousand one hundred people uh, packed into Nethermore. Fantastic uh, atmosphere as well, wasn't it? I just want to say how great it was. The, the season ticket offer that Geisley have come up with with the football league. I think that is something that other non-league clubs should look to because I was one of them people who used the season ticket offer, and I tell you what, it was one of the it was better than sitting at home and watching Chelsea Atletico Madrid. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I think that's the issue. If you're us, you've got to realise that every midweek game there's always Champions League or there's always you know there's always something on Sky, so you've just got to try find an angle. And I have to say that uh, the response from the City fans, Huddersfield fans, Leeds fans, and what, last night would you believe a Bayern Munich fan? <laughs> um, just been just been you know. People say, "Well, oh, this is better than I expected." It's 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 well priced, you know, in the sense you can you know you, you, can, you can have a pint and, and watch the game for the food's great, quid, you know. The food's great, Eddie. and it's sorry. The food's great. Yeah, the, yes. I mean, I have to say, unfortunately, we sold out last night because we <laughs> <laughs> the so, demand. So we, we, we'll certainly be thinking about that. But you know, I mean, it's, it's a good experience for the money. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, away from the pitch, I mean, there's just so much going on with Geisley, isn't there? Off off the pitch, the stadium and, and the pitch itself being relayed. So it's such an exciting time, isn't it, for the club? Yeah, I mean, the pitch has started today. I mean, I know people are quite complimentary about the pitch, but mm. if we're going to have a footballing team, which we'd like to think we have, we need a pitch which is the best we can get. So we start uh, we start today, but tomorrow the surface comes off, complete relay before we... Um, the, the pre-season game, the first one probably in Bradford City, mm. uh, and that's the other thing is that if, you know you need a playing surface to attract the cities and the Leeds and Huddersfields of the world to say you know nobody's going to get hurt playing on it. So yeah, absolutely. And complete hypothetical, we don't want to jinx anything. If guys who were successful and managed to get a prom- promotion, what impact would it have going to the Conference Premier? 
in terms of the club and, and finances, etc. Well, I think we have to be sensible about it. And to be fair to, to you know the, the marvelous support we have from the board, uh, you know everybody understands that we are what we are. We're a, we're a you know we're a big village club who's come a long way. But mm. I think if you, I mean you were saying, or Colin was saying the interview last night with with with, with Mark. Mark's very professional. Mm. Danny Boschel is, is very professional in what he's doing with the players. The players all know where they stand already in terms of you know what happens next. Mm. We won't go full time. We'll 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 reward people differently. Yeah. But we honestly believe there's a market out there with a, with the stadium rebuilt to get us, you know, a, a crowd which will be competitive mm. uh, in terms of being able to cope in the conference national. So, uh, what's the the stadium capacity going up to then? We assuming the planning permission goes through. And we've had open days and we've spoken to the residents and, and, and the various people who, who felt there were the, the issues around it. But assuming it does go through, we need to go to 4,000 or more just mm. to satisfy the Conference National's requirements. Right. Uh, and I think hopefully if, with the plans we've now going to resubmit, we've got a stadium which is it fits the environment, but it also fits the requirements of the league we hope we'll be in. Absolutely. And how long would that, that take to, to construct? Well, very ambitiously, the plan is that if the planning goes through, We've already spoken to the football conference about actually building through the course of next season. Wow, fantastic! So we would have you know an end an end clause while we build one end, then half a side clause while we while we do that, and so on and so on. So the plan would be that by next September you would have a fully fledged, um, more seats, more cover, better facilities in general, uh, but one that's that, a pitch that's suited, a ground that's suited to the requirements of the football league. Fantastic. Eddie, thanks very much for joining us. Okay, okay. Uh, good luck for the second Have a good leg. Night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go, Tim. That was Eddie Towers there. <sighs> I mean, he touched on it there. It's, it's an exciting time for the season. We don't want to jinx anything, but look at them. They're already getting plans afoot for a, a ground capacity that would meet the conference premier requirements. Um this is what a forward-thinking club should be doing and, and is doing, and it's it's exciting times, isn't it? I mean, the support's going to grow, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite obvious that, you know, from the top level of the club right down to the bottom level of the club, they've all got an aim, and they're all working towards that aim, and uh, it's, I'll tell you what, it's, it's a good start, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, there were lots of man-of-the-match performances on Wednesday evening, but the guy who did win it was Wayne Brooksby, and he was chatting to Tim Riches after the match. Great win for the lads. Um, only half a job, though, so I still got turn up on Saturday and make sure we get a result like you say a big game needed but so far so good really good performance tonight yeah we look solid um, they're very direct and I think that suits us um, so they play into our hands a bit and then hopefully they'll come at us on Saturday and we'll be able to break away and hopefully get another couple of goals it was two good goals scored by Geisley, but more importantly, how good was the defence to keep that clean sheet? Yeah, so does Rock Ollie and Danny Ellis were absolutely class today. Um, full back four was really good. Uh, didn't really look like conceding. A uh, couple of maybe half chances for him, but that was about it really. And uh, Stephen Dickinson coming in late on, obviously. Uh, how do you think he fared today? Yeah, he's a good goalie. He's got lots of experience. He's slotted in straight away and slotted in really well. And good performance from him. And now what what needs to happen on Saturday in that second leg? Uh, well, we need to go and score. We uh, I think we should not necessarily just sit on it and go and win the game. Well, Tim, it was a terrific performance, wasn't it, from Wayne Brooksby out on that wing. Worked hard all game. Like I said, there was lots of performances that were really good, but it was probably probably the right decision, would you say, in the end? Yeah, yeah, I think they did get the right decision for uh, the man in the match on that occasion. Uh, it was, you know, all, like you said, though, all of them had a good game and you could have picked him from absolutely anyone. Even going straight back to Dixon in the goal, you could have picked him, <laughs> really, especially with his assists. Absolutely, and we'll be hearing from Dickinson a bit later on. One of the goal scorers for Geisley was Ollie Johnson and he was speaking to Tom Feeney after the game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good result for us. I suppose it's only a job half done at the minute, so we've got to make sure we, we see it out and get, finish the job off in the second leg. You worked really hard, you got a goal. It's a fantastic night for yourself personally. Yeah, I'm delighted to get a goal. They've not really been going in for me. Um, I've had a few chances, a few half chances, and they've not quite um, gone in. But um, yeah, I hope I can kick, kick on with this goal and maybe add a few more and get Saturday and then hopefully get through to the final as well. You and Adam Bowes, you seem to be developing a bit of a partnership. Um, yeah, I mean... He's, he's easy to play with, to be fair. I mean, you've seen it with AJ as well. AJ and Boys have clicked, and uh, 
it's um, he's just a player who's um, just easy to work with really and I think the more games we play together um, hopefully that partnership will improve. So now we move on to Saturday and the second leg, do you think it will be the same again in terms of the way Farabi will play? Yeah, I suppose they'll be um, they was on the front foot from the off really trying to um, overturn the deficit and but I think we're confident in um, how we set up our shape and um, obviously we've, we'll have a way of playing um, on Saturday with, with the score being as it is and we ask, I dare say we'll look to it and, as they commit for all of really. There we have it, Ollie Johnson speaking to Tom Feeney last night. Cracking goal, wasn't it, by Johnson as well? Really was a great one. goal, yeah. Really showed his, uh, his class. Well, I'm delighted to say joining us on the line now, we've got Geisley fan and committee member of the Geisley Supporters Club. It's Adam Bridson. Hi, Adam. Hi, you all right? I'm good. Thanks very much for joining us. It's been a long time, but we were just waiting for you to make your debut on the route one, so we finally got you on, haven't yeah. we? <laughs> um, so, Adam, your reaction to the, to the game Wednesday evening? Uh, well, it was brilliant, to be honest. To not concede and to take a lead there on Saturday was a big thing, I think, especially with uh, the keeper being out injured, Stephen Drench, being ill, sorry. So it, it was a big win last night, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's exciting times for Geisel, isn't it, on and off the pitch? Yes, it is, yeah, with the plans for uh, expansion of the ground and all the new community things that are going on and that's with the, getting in the playoffs, yeah, it's a really exciting times for a Geisley fan. Absolutely, and what what are you going to do uh, the day of, of the next match on Saturday? Have you got any plans for going down a bit earlier? Or uh, well, gonna well I'm going on Sports Club bus as normal. Uh, seat's still available if you want to go with, with my brother and my dad, so bit nervous but looking forward to it yeah exactly I mean we were just commenting earlier that there was a lot of nervous energy in the in the stadium before I was I've got to admit I was actually quite relaxed I, I fancied Geisley, Geisley to do it but then you know you hear about the physicality of North Ferriby the fact yeah. that they finished second it was a bit yeah. worrying but Geisley dealt with those nerves perfectly really didn't they yes we, we might not have got off to the best of starting mm. dominating really but you know we controlled them I think we didn't create too many chances throughout the game but mm. I think we definitely deserved to win and the nerves of the fans were probably just what you'd expect to really, wasn't they? So, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Were you surprised by North Ferriby's... They didn't create much, did they, really? No, I was I was saying this. I don't, didn't think they did much at all. Apart, they might have put a few crosses into the box, but I don't ever think defence or keeper were troubled at all, so... Yeah. No. I can't remember being pulling off a save. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, so the second leg, what what do you expect there? If we had to push you for a, a score prediction, would you dare to, to give us one? I would predict maybe a, a 2-1 or 1-0. I think it'll be a, a one-goal winning margin for us, what, what I'm hoping anyway. Okay. It just depends on how well they... I think they're going to come out all guns blazing, aren't they? So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. would have thought. Adam, thanks very much for joining us. Right, thank you very thank much. Thank you, good luck, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go, that's Adam Bridson from the uh, committee member of the Geisley Supporters Club. <sighs> There's going to be... If they were nervous... Wednesday night, they're going to be nervous Saturday, aren't they, Tim? They certainly are. Um, it'll be interesting to see everyone's pre-match rituals before, not just <laughs> players but fans as well. Absolutely. It's going to be uh, it's a tricky one. And uh, What did you do before Bradford City in the, the two Wembley visits? What was your kind of build-up to that? Um, well, the first one, just enjoyed it. Went to the pub and uh, went into a Bradford City pub on uh, the Saturday night because it was on the Sunday and got drunk and then the, <laughs> and then the Sunday morning just drove down uh, parked up mm. uh, no real pre-match rituals no. as such maybe a couple of just it was, heavy it was drinking. more for Bradford it was more the post-match rituals last season <laughs> which well, was the interesting one well it was 10 the last time Leeds made a final uh, of oh note dear. so yeah quite depressing uh, Stephen Dickinson the goalkeeper we mentioned only made a handful of appearances this season, but what a terrific performance! And he was speaking to Tim Riches after the game. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I enjoyed it. I got told this morning half eight I was playing. Jen, she's been in hospital poorly, so I had my mind on it since start at game, start at day, and um, we did well. I had a first couple of good touches, and then that puts your mind in it. So looking forward to the next game. Only job I've done so far, but uh, what, how good does it feel to get that two 0 win? Um, any win because it's just just a sort of well cup game really so we've just got to go there and um, try not to concede and obviously they'll be pushing for it and we, we could get them on break with players we've got so it um, should be a good entertaining game second one so we'll see if I'm playing or not and uh, obviously with the two goals there they were really important but just how important was it to keep that clean sheet as well yeah they, they, they didn't have a lot of chances just um, a lot of 
aerial threat in box, got some big lads, but we dealt with it, no problem. So if they want to do that all game, they can do. So we're more than um, confident that way we can do a job, second game, and then one-off game to finish it. You never know. And uh, how do you think they'll fare on Saturday? And what, what, what do guys need to do to secure that final spot? We just have to do basics and just defend properly. Any, just just get rid of the ball. You don't have to fussy tap it about round that back. If there's no one, just turn them. And they, they can't score if they're not in our box. So looking forward to it, if I play or not. Well, well played tonight, Stephen. Right. Thank you. And like we've said, it was uh, an incredible performance from the goalkeeper there. You wouldn't have liked to have been in his shoes last night, would you? A handful of appearances and then a semi-final of a playoff. Especially against North Ferriby as well. I mean, you know, there's easier teams you'd like to probably come in against. But, you know, like a true professional, he actually came in and he just, you know, he'd think he'd been there all season the way that he played. Absolutely fantastic. The back four in front of him were pretty st- uh, solid as well absolutely we've got to remember of course there's another team still in it North Ferribit a home tie they finished above Geisley in the league so they could still turn this around couldn't they they certainly could I mean y- you know we did you said to Adam earlier about not being uh, them not creating much but they do have two strikers who you know it doesn't take much for them they can just they just get the opportunity and they'll do it Nathan Jarman's one of them uh, and I think it's Anthony Wilson is the other one uh, those two they only need one chance and they will hit you hard <laughs> they're pretty good um, so you know I mean looking at the stats guys that do have more goals throughout the team um, but not, you know they both sc- both teams have scored the same pretty similar amounts uh, over the course of the season so we'll Geisley play for a draw, I don't know. Mm. It's a tough one. Mm, it is, isn't it? Well, their manager, North Ferriby's Billy Heath, he was chatting with Tom Feeney after Wednesday's game. Well, performance went great. It, it went poor, but it went great. It just, um, we just looked tired. We just, we just, we just looked tired. We, um, two goals obviously went, you know, two goals were poor. Back to front, two, two balls, 60, 70 yards back to front. It went great. You know, we've got to defend better than that. We've got to, we've got to defend a lot better than that. Obviously negatives as well. We picked up another couple of injuries, Ryan Kendall and, and, and obviously Liam King with an ankle problem. So we negatives of that. Um, but obviously Danny Clark was a shadow of himself tonight because you know he'd been ill for three days with with flu really bad. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have really played, but fair play to the boy. He wanted to give it a go, and you know now he's paying the price for it now, um, as he sits in our changing room. <laughs> um, positive side, Anthony Wilson came through. Came through. You know, virtually half an hour. Uh, you know, it was touch and go whether we were even going to put him on the bench, but he's come off the bench and he's and that's the positive side. But like I say, we're just hanging on at the minute. We're just we're just literally hanging on. We don't. What side we've got for Saturday again? Who knows? I was going to say, although it ended two 0 no further, you did have chances. Well, we, we always we're always going to have chances. You know, when Matty Wilson's had a header from a corner. You know, I've got to say he was outstanding tonight. You know, the boys played. That's his second game in Matty Wilson's second game in two two and a half months, and he was. And to be fair, he was outstanding. Um, but like we, you know, we haven't had a little bit of luck in the box, and you know, you can always say that. But we've created. You know, we haven't created a real good. But we've had. We've we've we've, we've looked. We've looked positive on corners. You know, we could have, we should have probably done better. Russ Fry's volleyed over from six yards. First half, he's volleyed over from six yards. You know, it drops him in the box, and you think just hit the target. It wasn't fluent from us. We've played a lot, a lot, lot better during the season. But like I say, we're still in the game, and that, that and that's the main thing. So going into Saturday, is that the message you're going to be giving the players then? I've just sold them in the dressing room, we're still in the game. And like I say, it's how we react now, it's how much belief we've got. The next goal is paramount. You know, we're 2-0 down at half-time. That's how I see it, we're 2-0 down in the game half-time. And now we've got a, you know, the next goal is paramount. It is really is paramount, the next goal. And, and, and goals change games. And if we get, you know, hopefully if we get the next goal, then, you know, it's game on, isn't it? There we go, Billy Heath, the North Ferriby manager, chatting after their loss to Geisley in the playoff semi-final. He had to be disappointed. He sounded very disappointed. He probably expected a lot more from his team than what he got. Yeah, he did say that. A couple of them did have uh, injury issues there. Uh, Not overly sure as to how much that would have changed the result of the game because... Like I said, for me, tactically, I think he got it wrong playing yeah. that high line. I think as soon as he saw the length of Dickinson's kick, he should maybe have 
rethought about his strategy but he didn't and he just stuck with it and for me I think I, I don't think it's any coincidence that that's where the two goals came from if, if let's look at right if the goals had come from different players you know like corners and through balls and you know just a little bit of passing and then a long range shot then yeah you could say my tactics were alright but I just think the way the two goals came I think his high, the line was far too high for him and he, he should have dropped that line let's face it over the course of the season it's guys let eight North Ferry be two <laughs> Do you know That's what I mean? True. They've scored eight goals against him now. I'd just like to say you proved your fact sheet capabilities then because you came up at the end of the game with that little did. gem, didn't you? I did, yeah. Eight two to Geisley overall. If only that could be the playoff I agree. But it's so. got to look good going into the next leg. Uh, I mean, it, it was it was the away game that Geisley won three 0 which kicked off the great run under Bauer. Now, yeah, Chris Bell, he was with us, wasn't he, Tim? And he managed to catch up with Danny Ellis after the game. Uh, yeah, I thought we were, I thought we, well, it was a professional performance at home. Um, obviously happy with a clean sheet, which is massive um, going into Saturday's game. Um, no, and I thought, I thought everyone dug in tonight and a prof- professional performance. Um, and we, we know what, what to expect on Saturday. Obviously a two-goal lead and, as you said, the all-important clean sheet. How crucial was it to not let them back in? Well, I mean, it's massive. Um, if, they, if they were to get, obviously, any sort of chance at goal, or which we sort of kept them out as much as possible, um, then it's a different, different game altogether. But with it having a clean sheet and scoring two goals, it's always um, good to take into the next leg because it's only half time. Now, obviously, you know, you've been in the situation with guys before. How much can you draw on, you know, past experiences with another set of playoffs? Yeah, I mean, playoffs, it, it is a lottery at times. I mean, we've finished second last couple of seasons and, you know, not done so well. But, I mean, this time finishing fifth I think there's we're, we're the team that's on form but at the same time we've got to be, keep the momentum going and keep professional and uh, hopefully we can uh, kick on and you never know fingers crossed with with going about it pretty quietly and just sneaking in towards the end does that take some of the pressure off really from finishing second well I think it does I mean finishing second I mean the teams that are, that are in the playoffs have been up there all season and we've sort of like come come up come from sort of nothing um, and nicked it at the end but having said that Boston lost uh, we won so we'd have, we'd have got in anyway but uh, it's a little bit different this time there's more I wouldn't say there's not as much pressure on us but there's, there's more pressure on, on the teams above us sort of um, that have been up there all season and of course going to their place on Saturday we saw tonight that they're a physical side to say the least yeah yeah we know that what they're all about they're quite direct uh, make it difficult for you to work hard um, and we, like I say we know, we know what to expect um, played them like this is well, the third time we've played them this season so yeah we're, we're all ready and ready to go uh, apart from my ankles a bit so, but yeah, everyone, all the lads buzzing um, and take it on till, uh, to Saturday now. Also joining us in the media section last night was the fact sheet. You got a chinwag with Andy Holdsworth, didn't you? I did. I'm not normally the one for the interviewing. I mean, you know, everyone was buzzing around man. trying to get out. I, exactly. I was like, I, I just choose what I'm going to talk about. I don't. I don't do interviews. That's that's up to the uh, glory seekers of Steve, Chris, <laughs> Pete, whoever yeah. want uh, you know, Doug, True. whoever wants to get any interviews. They're the yeah. glory seekers. I just sit in the back. Yeah, yeah. You know, but You're no, done. no. It was a uh, good chat with him. Absolutely. Let's have a listen. Edge game. Um, both teams. Wanted to get a result, and luckily we did. We go, go into Saturday's game now with a 2 2 0 lead, but it's not over yet. It's half time. What do you think you'll be trying to do in this next leg? Do you think you'll be trying to consolidate the two goal lead? Or? I think if, if, you, if you try and defend it, you make it hard for yourself. So we're just going to go and play as normal game, which we've done tonight. Um, we're going to get chances. Everybody gets chances. They're going to create chances. Um, and hopefully we can add to his tally and uh, go on and get more goals. There were a couple of edgy moments for both sides. Could it have been 3 0? I mean, we created quite a few chances tonight. Obviously, Boise missed the first one just before his goal. Created numerous chances the second half, and they have as well. But they are playoffs games, they're one-off games. Um, you know what they're like. Edgy, tense affairs. Um, so we'll see how it goes Saturday now, but we'll keep working out to the end. How difficult of a game was it for you to be playing in? Was it one of the toughest games you've had all season? It's like we say, it's playoff games. I mean, I expected these to go up, actually. I expected them to go up, but they didn't. Um, now they've got to go through the playoffs. And, it is hard, not going to be wrong, you get pipped, we've, we've had it the last couple of years getting pipped um, and now that obviously they're in the playoffs and they've got to fight for every ball, every second ball going. Like I said, they've got to come at us now and, and we're going to score three, three goals to go in the game or two to take into extra time. So, And obviously it's still really, really early and there's still the other leg to go, but what do you make of the Altrincham Hensford? It was 2-2 tonight. Any of them you'd rather not face? Or? Well, we knew at the start, if, if we were going to win the playoffs, we had to be the f- well, four Second, shall we say the second best teams in the league um, so whoever it is we're going to be away 
Um, but look, we've played Ansford twice, we've played Alty twice, we know what they're all about. We've got to go and perform on Saturday first and then take care of the result after that if we get there. OK, well, you heard him at the start of the show, uh, guys, a correspondent, Colin Robertson, who was commentating on the game last night and he's joining us on the line now. Hi, Colin. Good evening, Steve. Um, so, Colin, f- massive relief winning that game. What what were your impressions of it? How, how, you know, it was a terrific night all round, wasn't it? Yeah, terrific night. But playoffs are oh, they? Are oh, hell, aren't they? <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. I mean, it's so nerve wracking, isn't it? Mm. And uh, finely balanced team that can finish second, like North Ferriby, strong team. And you can finish fifth, but it being a great run of form, and, and we've come a cropper that way a couple of times in the last yeah. year, last two seasons. Absolutely, North Ferriby. I, I, I mean, we're told about the great physicality, and you could definitely see that throughout the game. But Geisley just dealt with it really well, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, they're a, they're a, like you say, they're a physical, they're a strong side, and it can be, it's easy to be critical because yeah. it's not pretty to watch. But it's effective, and they've obviously picked up quite a few uh, results. But they seem to be struggling in for form um, recently, and I just wonder whether, you know, as the energy of the legs have been sucked across the course of the season, it's just proving itself to be a little less effective in, in recent weeks. Um, but, um, you know, they've, they've got undoubted quality. You know, Nathan Jarman. Um, Anthony Whistle, when he comes on off the bench, he, he's, he's another, you know, good, strong target man. He was banging in the goals earlier on in the season. They've had a couple of injuries as well, don't forget. Um, that's uh, hampered them too, as well as we have had. Um, but uh, yeah, it, they're clearly a physical side, and they clearly they play on that, that aspect of the game. Yeah, Colin, you know that. They did have Geisley on the ropes, especially for the first five ten minutes, and uh, I was worried for Geisley, thinking that they were just far too open. Um, but then the openness kind of got the better of um, of North Ferriby, and you, you know I was talking earlier about that North Ferriby played a very high line, and the ball over the top. I mean that was effective enough. Some people think that's not pretty, but when you've got the speed of boys and uh, Johnson up there. You know why you tip? Uh, why pass it around, especially through a very physical North Ferriby midfield? Well, a uh, couple of things. Did you come to the game in the first ten minutes? We were we we we, we struggled for about a minute and a half. Next thing, then we were up there <laughs> getting corners and pressing them. Uh, but uh, sorry, I'm not going to be too partisan here. I'll, I'll, <laughs> it, it might it might have been um, <laughs> it might have felt longer to me just because of how nervous it was. That's all. Uh, oh yes, okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you that one. Backtrack quickly. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, okay. I think I think first taking your point about the ball over the back. What we did well, I thought, all night uh, was mix our approach play up very effectively. We used the width. We were able to knock the ball around, and we were trying to go through the middle. But um, one thing we do have in Adam Boyce's pace and uh, his ability with his first touch yeah. to take the ball down well. Uh, and uh, Dickinson was obviously the stand-in uh, after Stephen Drench uh, w- uh, had to drop out through illness beforehand. Um, is uh, was was able to get some good distance on the clearances. Both the goals actually, in effect, came from us uh, counterattacking quickly from the from the keeper. Um, <laughs> well. And you know, in the case of Boise, I mean, he, he, what he's got is in pace, power, and strength, and 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 touch um, is just uh, exceptional at the moment. And his scoring record, obviously, just proves that point. And he didn't let that early chance that he missed, that one on one, affect him, did he? No, and I think he's got great mental resilience. Yeah. Uh, really, he was getting pelters at the very uh, start of the um, season when he joined. Right when he first joined the guys, I mean, because he had a game where he he did miss one or two real sitters. Mm. Um, he, you know, and it's easy for crowds then to get on his back. I mean, there was a lot of grumbling in the crowd um, at the, at, in the early part of his uh, guysy career. And, um, you know, you could see he was getting into the right positions. You see, when he travelled away, him and Ollie Johnson were the real deal. But, yeah. you know, we had a few grumbly uh, voices in the stand at home because they, they just didn't, they didn't get the breakthrough. So they've, they've really ridden that storm. And, and again, on, on uh, Tuesday night, he could have got his head down. He could have got frustrated. He didn't. He just did the same things a, a couple of minutes later. But this time, hit the back of the net. And, and going into the second leg, uh, Colin, we know that, you know, it's a playoff. Um, I don't. I, if we had a swear box for how many times it went, it's a playoff. Anything can happen. Cliche. Then I think it'd be quite full. Uh, be it a buy around. <laughs> uh, but North Ferriby 
they have been a better team at home this season. They managed 47 points at home and they've struggled away with only th- with 33 points. So, you know, Geisley still need to be aware of that stat, really, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a funny old game, isn't it? Football, and, and this is really a game of two halves, isn't it, potentially? Um, oh, now that's two of the cliches. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, <laughs> as um, many as he could in one sentence. Fantastic. Yeah. Are you over the moon, Colin? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one cliche and raise you by three or four. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I think you make a good point that they're a much, uh, obviously a much stronger side um, at, their, at their ground than, than they will be on the travels. That said, you know, that was where we first got our victory um, that really kick-started uh, Mark's um, recovery uh, that season. Danny Bosch had just come back to uh, the club and then we went to Ferriby uh, and beat them 3-2. And that was when they were in their pomp and stride, really, early on in the season. So I think, you know, there, there is a, a little bit of a precedent. Mm. Um, I think there'll be self-belief amongst the lads and must know that they are capable of beating uh, Ferriby um, at their place. Uh, and certainly, if not beating them, certainly not getting uh, turned over two or three nil. So I would, I would fancy that uh, they'll be, um, um, they'll be, uh, you'll be confident enough that they can, they can do the business on on Saturday. But you know, you have to expect a bit of a whirlwind at mm. some point. Um, and uh, Ferriby, uh, like you say, in the, they're not in second place and having racked up all those points for nothing. Just, uh, I just wanted your thoughts on a couple of things back from the the game on Wednesday. Um, I mean, we've touched on already the keeper Stephen Dickinson coming in after only a handful of games this season. When that was announced before the game, um, and we took our seat, there was kind of a uh, feeling that spread amongst the, the the fans there. So it can't be understated how well he did, really, can it? Oh, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say one thing. You're not talking about. Um, an untried and untested, no. you know, a second-rate goalkeeper who's no. been sitting on the bench all season. You know, Dick has proven quality. Mm. Um, he's played in the Conference Premier. He's he's got class in terms of his, his pedigree. And you know, yeah, he's he's uh, towards the end of his uh, footballing career, playing career. I'm sure um, in in age terms, you know, uh, pushing forty is, uh, is is never uh, is never the start of a football career. But keepers can uh, keep going for a long time, and I think he showed it. And and w- those who didn't travel to Workington, where he had to uh, step in for uh, Stephen Drench beforehand, um, uh, missed uh, a performance which was, I thought was excellent. He, he really kept us in that game. And he's a great shot stopper as well, a super shot stopper. So, I mean, if there are groans, if there was concerns, I think it's uh, really more about the quality of Stephen Drench that you're missing. And yeah. he is probably the best goalkeeper in that division, in my mind. Um, uh, rather than the uh, concerns about Stephen Dickinson, because he, he, you know, he proved it again. He did everything right at the right time. I thought last night. Absolutely, and a man of the match performance from Wayne Brooksby as well. What did you make of his performance? He's a great player in my mind at the moment. He's um, grown uh, across the course of the season. Um, one of the things I think I was really impressed with his work rate, his ability to get back and put in some important challenges. I think as a man, the team defended brilliantly uh, last night as well as went forward with conviction when we did go forward um, and Wayne Brooksby was a, 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 one prime example of that for me I mean we've all seen what he could do for a couple of seasons now when he's got on the ball and ran at defenders and ran at players you can see that he's got uh, great ability great pace uh, and a good touch but uh, his overall work rate has just come on and I think he's stepped up a level Absolutely and what a great atmosphere it was 1100 fans packed in there it was a great atmosphere wasn't it Colin and a sign of what's to come with the ground uh, updates and everything that, that's happening there it, the future looks bright yeah it does I mean it, I, I, th- I thought it was quite a poignant night actually all in all um, you know the playoffs um, had been a, a real bugbear for us for a, a couple of seasons and it was wonderful I mean that was the only second time we've won a playoff game yeah. um, <laughs> you know, we, we won the first one back in uh, um, uh, well, three seasons ago against Boston United 1-0 and ever since then I think we've kind of drawn or lost uh, playoff um, uh, ties that we've played so um, it was it was great to get the victory the closeness of the crowd to the ground and yes there's developments to come and also the fact that you know we, we had that minute's applause at the beginning for Michael Hill the, uh, the, yeah. the, the long serving 
um, uh, club member who'd, who'd really been part of a, a team that from 1984 when he joined uh, was in completely different shape and you know that was that was also I thought was very poignant and it was a great occasion to uh, remember um, remember him uh, on uh, on, on uh, Wednesday night, so yeah, it was a, a really. I thought it was a really one of those special evenings at Nethermore, and uh, it was a great result as well, just to wrap it up. So, could the Route One boys be good luck charms for Geisler? Oh come on! We've been winning plenty of games without you. <laughs> you are not not in the playoffs by the sound of it. <laughs> you need us at that second leg. Oh, here we go! You want your free passes, dear? Is that what you're after? That's, uh, oh. I've got you lot. I've got you. You've got your measure. Oh, there uh, we go. No, yeah, actually, yeah, it was only great. Chris who got a media pass. Can I say? Oh well, good, well done to you guys. Yeah, then. Uh, go. I'll, uh, I'll help my hand. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, Steve invested in two hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I was incredibly greedy. I must admit, but you know, it's all going to a good cause. Colin, we hope same again. Round two on Saturday, and that will be speaking to you and looking forward to a playoff ba- final. Oh, I'm touching wood right now. Anyway, you've got a new nickname, Stephen Two Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Wee! There we go, fantastic. Uh, Chris Bell was actually very angry that I didn't give him one of my hot dogs, actually, because I promised him a pie and they, they'd, they'd sold out. Such was the demand, they'd sold, they'd sold out of food. I'm saying, listen, yeah, it was a great night. It was a really super night, actually. Yeah, that, just, that says it all, doesn't it? It's all that food. <laughs> Absolutely. Colin, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. So, Colin Robertson, he's been with us all season as Colin on the Geisley Trail, and it's great to, you know, if they can do it, that we've we've got someone on the front line there experiencing it. We have, yeah, yeah. You know, he obviously has a great passion for the club, mm. and. It's just great to hear people being really positive about Cook because there has been a bit of doom and gloom around uh, certain other, other teams in, yeah. in the region. Yeah, you know Leeds, Huddersfield, even Bradford. There's yeah. been a lot of Park doom Avenue and gloom. as well. It's Park been Avenue there's been a bit. Out. There has been a little bit, hasn't there? But Halifax and Geisley really are raising the bar for West Yorkshire. And I think it proves quite a lot when you're looking on Facebook and you've got Huddersfield fans, uh, City mm. fans, and Leeds fans all in agreement of how fantastic it is at Halifax and Geisley doing so well. I couldn't agree more. You're listening to The Route One Show, covering football in West Yorkshire and beyond. Now, there was another massive game in the region on Wednesday evening. It was Halifax Town versus Cambridge in the first leg of the playoff semi-final in the Conference Premier. And now on the phone to discuss everything Halifax Town is Andrew Pinfield. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Steve. Thanks very much for joining us. A 1-0 win for Halifax, a Lee Gregory penalty. Was it a nervy, nervy game? What what was it like? I wouldn't say it was a nervy game as such, but uh, towards the end, when it was still 0-0, you could, I suppose, say we did need a goal to take down to the Abbey Stadium on Sunday. So the timing of the goal was impeccable, really, with seven minutes to go. But overall, I think the youngsters did very well. When you've got lads like Matty Pearson and Louis Maynard, in the middle of the pitch, they weren't overawed by the occasion, and they certainly uh, proved their, their worth in the second half. And we, like I say, we have got the goal advantage to take down on second leg Sunday. So overall, a good performance. Could have gone either way, uh, but we're in the ascendancy with a very tricky game to look forward to on Sunday. Um, Andrew, me and Steve, were, we were glued to the Twitter on uh, Wednesday night. We were looking, keeping an eye on what was happening. At, um, at Halifax and uh, it looked like the teams were kind of looking like they were cancelling each other out, was that the case? Yeah, I'd, I'd say, I'd say in the Cambridge started the game very very bright, the first 15 minutes they had a couple of good half chances, couple of headers and then we came into the game and took over and Matt Glennon after that's not had a great deal to do so the, you would say a 1-0 scoreline on the reflection of play was about right, although Cambridge might disagree. They had a, a chance actually in the 93rd minute where if they'd have scored and they got the equaliser at 1-0, that would really have fired them up for the return leg. But we're in the uh, ascendancy, we're 1-0 up, and uh, it's all to play for again on Sunday. Now, I have to take my hat off to the referee uh, for the awarding of the penalty for uh, Halifax. In my eyes, it was no doubt it was a penalty, and... Penalty, it was a decision which you don't see get given often enough towards a striker. Normally in that situation, the referee penalises the striker more than the defender, when in fact the defender was the one who came over top of him. So with the timing of the penalty, do you think the referee made a gutsy decision, but probably the correct one? 
I think it was the correct decision. I've not heard anybody say it wasn't a penalty. Even the Cambridge United interviews I've, I've watched today, and on one thing or another, there's nobody disputing the fact it was a bit clumsy from the centre back, yeah. straight into the back of Matty Pearson. And what may have helped us slightly as well was like it was in front of our spectators when there's 2,000 fans begging for the referee to give the penalty. Sometimes it does help, but uh, at the end of the day, he did get the decision right, and gladly for Lee Gregory, he put the ball in the back of the net to give us this 1 0 advantage. Oops, you wouldn't have wanted anyone else stepping up for that penalty, would you? <laughs> well, he's a, a man in form. We uh, we know what we get from Lee Gregory. He did put it away cool. He, he wasn't nervous about the situation. Sent the keeper the wrong way, and uh, it's just what the doctor ordered. Absolutely. How nervous will you be for the game on Sunday, Andrew? Oh, I'll be nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> I've more or less said I've done most things in my life, but I've not seen Halifax Town play at Wembley, so it'll be a very nerve, nervous day. If we do get the goal early doors, that might settle us down. That would give us a two-goal advantage. So I think if we score early and score first, it keep the pressure on Cambridge. If Cambridge got the first goal, that could be back to the wall stuff, but it's going to be an intriguing clash for sure. Um, how will Aspen approach the game? Because obviously, without we know that Halifax is a way record, hasn't been fantastic this season. Although it is something that they've definitely improved upon, especially in the last third of the season. Do you think it'll be a nervous start from Halifax, or do you think it'll just be a pretend you're playing at the Shea and go for it? Well, like, this is it. The, the way they started away from home. I mean, uh, let's not forget the first game of the season at Cambridge was a 5-1 defeat, but there were circumstances behind that with two red cards early on. So I think it'll be a totally different game. We didn't start to the season away from home very well, but having said that, the back end of the season, apart from the loss at Southport, we'd gone a run of five away games winning. And let, let's not forget, we've gone to Barnet, beat them 4-0. We've gone to Grimsby, who were in the playoffs and beat them 1-0. So that's now how far back is that. And I just think he might just tinker very slightly with the team. Simon Ainge, who was on the bench last night, I've just a feeling he might play five at the back to combat the Cambridge attack. And he may leave Adam Smith out, but it's up to Mr Aspin as to what he does. He's a better judge of his team and squad than I am, but uh, he has got options there for sure. He's done well so far this season. <laughs> Well, that's right. I mean, let's not forget Chris Smith, who joined the club later on in the season. He's played six or seven games, slotted comfortably in the centre-back, got two goals. So Neil Aspin's done a great job with his signings and uh, long may it continue. And the travelling share on, on a Sunday, have a day to remember. And we're looking forward to a Wembley final on May the 18th. And any pre-match rituals that you'll be going through? <laughs> No, I mean, I don't think I'll be sleeping too well Saturday night. We'll be going off down there at early Sunday morning. It's a 1.30 kick-off, so there'll be a lot of town fans going. The thing about last night's result as well is it'll just take a few more supporters down with us. If it had been a draw, it might have knocked two or three hundred off, but uh, everyone coming out of the ground was buoyant last night. And if we can get a travelling support, 12, 1,500, that'll be superb. But no, we're, uh, we're all excited. I mean, let's, let's face it, Halifax Town, part-time club, uh, backs against the wall all season not to expect to be in this position total underdog so we can go and enjoy it we've got the one goal lead if we scored early I think that would really set the players and uh, supporters in good spirits and let's hope it's a joyous occasion Sunday Absolutely, the game was on BT the, the first leg is it getting the same treatment on Sunday? Yes, yeah, I'm just actually watching the other uh, player semi-final now <laughs> uh, Grims won gate said one on BT and uh, similar on, on Sunday Halifax in Cambridge it's the live game at one thirty. so for those that can't make the game, then uh, tune in and hopefully see Halifax victory. Uh, one last thing, if looking at it pessimistically, if it doesn't happen for Halifax on Sunday, which we're all hoping it does, obviously, you know, it's still it's going to be able to attract players to the club by saying that you finished in the playoffs. Surely. Well, it's been a remarkable season, Let, let's not... Mm. Uh, just forget where we've come from, where we're at now. Yeah. Uh, it's been absolutely wonderful, and uh, all the supporters appreciate how, how well Aspen has done this season with the limited resources, no trading facilities, part time players trading twice a week. And like you say, finishing in this position, it might attract players to the club. And what Neil Aspen has done over the years is uh, got the players got, got bigger moves. Liam Morgan's moved on, Jamie Vardy has moved on under Aspen, Lee Gregory may be moving on in the summer, we'll have to wait and see. But it's a, certainly a carrot to uh, players to come to Halifax Town, knowing that they can further their careers at this year. Absolutely. Andrew, we'll speak to you next week. Let's hope it's good news. Yeah, fingers crossed. Let's hope so. Thank you very much, Andrew. Cheers, now. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
There we go, Tim. So this week we've we've focused on Geisley largely, um, but in the next couple of weeks, you know, next season, uh, next week rather, we're going to do a kind of end of season review for all our teams in in the region. Then perhaps a week after we can do something on on Halifax in in greater detail, get one or two of the players on because, like you mentioned to Andrew, then it's been a fantastic season, you know, whether or not they get to the final. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's. For a part-time club to finish where they finished in the league and uh, to be winning the first leg of the playoff with a good chance of going to Wembley, I mean, just that is fantastic for Halifax and something which most Shaman won't have thought about uh, at the start of the season. So I think it's definitely something to be celebrated no matter where they finish in the league. I mean, let's face it, at the start of the season, I thought maybe 10th if yeah. they were lucky. You know, that, the way it was that looking, would have been a fantastic it? season yeah. Yeah. and uh, you've just got to think where would they have been if they'd have sorted that away form out yeah. a little bit sooner could they have been pushing Luton I mean let's face it Luton more or less walked it in the yeah. end so they might not have got that far up but you, you know, never know against a team player second who Cambridge led the uh, conference for quite a while as well didn't they so yeah. Yeah. interesting one there absolutely absolutely Okay, well, that's all we've got time for on this special edition of the Route 1 show, which was focusing on Geisley in the playoffs and a little bit of Halifax Town as well thrown in there, wasn't it? It's like a playoff party. (laughs) Indeed, indeed. But next week we're going to have an end-of-season review for all our teams in the region here, including Leeds United, Huddersfield Town, Bradford City, Halifax Town and Bradford Park Avenue. I've been Stephen Brown. Thanks very much for listening and thank you, Tim, for joining me. Thank you. 